Interesting. All right. Well, Buck, thank you so much for your insight. This thank story, you. of course, still unfolding. And uh, Barcelona, of course, one of the most popular tourist destinations in the world. And in the middle of August, it is safe to say there were many Americans there today, too. Also today, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson urged them to stay safe, but let their friends and family know that they are okay. We stand ready to assist law enforcement, national security authorities in Spain, our consulates in uh, Barcelona and our entire Mission Spain team are currently assisting Americans in Spain who are affected by these events. We ask U.S. citizens in the area to let your loved ones know you are safe. Terrorists around the world should know the United States and our allies are resolved to find you and bring you to justice. All right, so are terrorist attacks like this having the designed effect, scaring innocent people away from living and traveling and enjoying life? Well, let me take it to my fearless party panel tonight from the Fox News specialist co-host Kat Timpf and from the Next Revolution Sunday night on the Fox News Channel host Steve Hilton and the Blaze TV host Lawrence Jones is here. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for having me. Uh, Steve, I'm going to start with you. Obviously, you are from London, and there have been a number of terror attacks, yeah. not only in your home country, but all over Western Europe. And now we see uh, the heart of Spain attacked, you know, the, the most uh, tourist-packed street in one of the busiest cities in Spain, Barcelona. What do you make of today's attack? Well, I think that as we were watching it unfold, it just felt so sadly familiar and predictable. Um, and there's one thing that actually makes me really angry when we think about those attacks we've seen, um, the ones you mentioned, is that in every single case, there's this phrase that pops out after a few hours, maybe a few days, which is that the attackers were known to the authorities. Yeah, that, that was a, a we, question that I've had because yeah, we saw we that in that, London yeah. after the, the London Bridge attack. But every single one of them every single one of them and the reason I bring that up is because when we see things like this and to your point about people continuing to live their lives you know we, we're not going to turn our city centers into war zones we're not we, we are going to continue living our lives that's yeah. what people are doing and so people say well what can we possibly do about these very unsophisticated primitive attacks we just get a car and, and the car here. attacks some of the hardest to thwart because that's right everyone's got well, that's a weapon, why I, essentially, because mm -hmm. Well, that's why I went to this point about known to the authorities, because yeah. the real answer is that we, we, our governments all over the world are getting, they're asking for more and more power, more and more information, they want to snoop on everyone, yeah. and yet every single time they know who these people are. And so my question is, why can't we do a better job if they're on the radar of the authorities because the, the, the of problem, tracking them? Yeah, and, and I think the problem is, Kat, we're going after too many people. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this happens time and time again. We're going after too many people. We're spying on too many people, yes. taking in so much information mm -hmm. that the worst people who will commit these acts of murder, they're the ones who elude the grasp who should be dealt with swiftly. Yeah, absolutely. We keep hearing that over and over again, known to the authorities, they knew, they knew, they knew. And meanwhile, and at least in this country, we're talking about having to have surveillance on everybody and completely destroying our civil liberties to the point where there's enough threats in our own government to our freedoms yeah. that that you, it doesn't even need to come from overseas at that point. So we need to make sure that they don't win without having to do anything in terms of us not destroying our liberties. For them. No, we, we don't want yeah. to. We don't want to compromise our, our freedom and our freedom to travel and enjoy various cultures and our quality of life. But how do you stop stuff like well, this? Well, I, I, I still, in my opinion, I think there's still a competition in the intelligence community. Um, we saw after 9-11, um, they, they created the, the, the Director of National Intelligence mm -hmm. and, and Homeland Security to kind of bring everybody together. But it doesn't seem like there's a lot of sharing of information. Um, I, they say in the UK, these people were known. In America, they say they were on watch list yeah um, obviously you guys weren't watching them hard enough um, because then they later commit attacks mm -hmm. um, you're not sharing information uh, among different departments um, and, and we've seen uh, this over and over again where one branch has part of the puzzle they didn't share with the other yes. uh, department yeah. that has the other that's exactly the what happened in the Boston right. bombing actually right. the Russians told I can't remember which bit of the uh, government, whether it was the FBI, or whatever, and that wasn't passed on. Exactly. And, and the, the local United States, law we're better at that. Our, yeah. uh, our agencies communicate better than they better here in the United well, States. Well, and, and that's something here. we've learned since 9/11. But it's still, Certainly. in my opinion, there's still a lot of tension amongst the agencies. Um, I understand that each of them get different types of intelligence based on the sources, but there needs to be sharing of information. I'm not saying to the public, yeah. but at least amongst the, the certain agencies. But I, I will say this: it's not a baking competition. Right. You know, it's not. 
as if if exactly. someone loans someone else their powdered sugar, right. they're going to lose the contest. Exactly. You know, this we all is have the same ultimately goal. to protect life and freedom. Uh, new information coming out. Uh, Catalan authorities are now saying, this is just crossing the wires, that they believe that all three events, the attack, the van attack in Barcelona, the house explosion uh, in Alcaron, Alcanar, sorry, and uh, the terrorists who were shot and killed in alleged terrorists in Cambrils, that all three of those are connected. That's brand new information, and we'll bring you much more of that. Now, coming up, the van used to run over the victims in today's attack uh, drove down a crowded promenade for a third of a mile. Motor vehicles seem to be terrorists' new weapon of choice. So what can we do to prevent them when all the terrorist needs is a set of keys? Jillian Turner joins me with some answers and thoughts next. We are back. We are live in New York, and we're going to bring you updates from Spain as soon as we get them. There have been a, a few throughout the show, but as horrific as the Barcelona attack has been, it didn't take long for CNN to politicize it with Wolf Blitzer wondering whether the terrorists were inspired by last week's tragic events in Charlottesville. Wolf? And there will be questions about copycats. There will be questions if uh, what happened uh, in Barcelona uh, was at all, at all, uh, a copycat version of what happened in Charlottesville, Virginia, even though there may be different characters, different political ambitions. Uh, they use uh, the, same, uh, the same killing device, a vehicle going at, at high speed into a group, a large group of pedestrians. Oh, never let the facts no. get in the way of a good story, Wolf. Many have taken his comments as an attempt to link the attack directly to President Trump, as the word Charlottesville has become synonymous with the president's poor handling of the aftermath. But even if Wolf wasn't trying to weaponize these senseless deaths, it's still impossible to ignore the sheer stupidity of his comments. As I mentioned earlier, cars have been used in seven attacks in Europe this year alone. A fact that Wolf failed to mention when he brought up Charlottesville. So, was Wolf Blitzer being intentionally dishonest or just really, really incompetent? Let me bring back my party panel, Kat Timpf, Steve Hilton, and Lawrence Jones. Uh, Lawrence, I will start with you. What is your reaction to Wolf Blitzer's astounding comments? My favorite word, shady. Mm -hmm. He intentionally did that. Come on, they wanted this uh, President Trump's misstep this week yeah. to continue in the news cycle. So to connect it to that, it was like, okay, yeah, this is part of President Trump rhetoric. Yeah. Come on, you know. You, he knows. He covers breaking news. There's been seven attacks. He knows it. He yeah. knows it. I mean, we're talking about uh, March of this year. That's when... It's um, the new weapon. Yeah, the pedestrians were mowed down on Westminster Bridge uh, in April in Sweden. Uh, an attack there in a truck killing five people. I mean, they're, they're, it's event after event yeah. like this that have been happening for years now. And Wolf Blitzer is that much of a dolt it's just that he tries to tie it to Charlottesville? <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm not going to go with a word. I'm going to go with an, an abbreviation, which is what <laughs> came to my mind when I heard this, which is the Twitter users will be familiar with FFS. Like, mm. what is he saying? Yeah. <laughs> and, and I just... I what, when we just watched the clip, <laughs> I... You know that phrase, jaw dropping. I <laughs> my jaw literally <laughs> dropped. It is unbelievable that yeah. you would, and it's. I think clearly, he's not an idiot. He's yeah. not right. actually stupid. Clearly, therefore, he was trying to politicize it. Mm -hmm. exactly. I was. I was mm -hmm. watching Shepard Smith today, masterfully laying out the events and right. the facts, and asking right. pointed questions, mm -hmm. and and getting real information, and narrating as things were unfolding. And that's exactly how you do it. We mm -hmm. don't need this form of extrapolation. The president will do enough damage to himself without Wolf Blitzer uh, throwing in his party grenades. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was. I took it as a direct insult to all of his viewers because he knows that that was not the case. He's been reporting on these van attacks. Or maybe it's an insult to himself because maybe he assumes all of his viewers haven't been listening to him all the time. He's been reporting on these van attacks. The first one being in Charlottesville, Charlottesville being the inspiration, I don't know like a nine-year-old that would buy that. Yeah. I really, really don't. I think people will, though. I, I, I really do because it's such a tense they, moment. They want to. They want yeah, they to. Want ISIS to and Al-Qaeda yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. have recipe books, yeah, yeah. essentially, that they say... They would be so mad, though, because they want the credit. But people, this be is mad. what a sensitive week They're, for yeah, people. ISIS this is our like, thing. Listen, yeah, yeah. This was not a neo-Nazi. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But since people are on edge this yeah. week, people are crying, sensitive, 
Um, this was the perfect moment if he wanted to be political yeah. to slide that in there and get a, 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 get attached to people's emotions and they'll believe it. Well, yeah. I think I think there are other ways but, of of tying the political narrative without making stuff exactly. up. Exactly. I mean, yeah. you, you can see that that there are psychological implications to domestic and right. foreign terrorism. Absolutely, and and there are similarities here that are not correlated with the president or what or whom he might have loosely inspired if that is the case at all. Yeah, but I mean, there's no, there's no one I think is suggesting that the, the president, even even his harshest critics actually inspired the the murder in Charlottesville. It's his response to it that yeah. people are mm -hmm. criticizing. I, I think that there and are so, people on the left who, who would like to tie them all together. I think his response was abhorrent. Indeed. I think it was clumsy. Right. I, I think that it was an insult. And I, I think on some level, uh, it's, it's really, really stupid. Yeah. Having said that, there is no basis for saying that this is a copycat yes, crime from that word, Charlottesville. Copycat. It, it's, it's so ridiculous. But That's one of those thoughts when it starts be, forming in your head yeah. before it gets out of your mouth. You say, never yeah. mind to yourself. He didn't you just say it once. He, you would help. On. He, he, he actually yeah. you know, elaborated he said the it. thought. Yeah. He didn't just... But I would disagree with you, Steve. I think there's some people on the left that believe that the president inspired um, what happened in Charleston. Yeah. Now, Charles that's what yeah Charles, Charlottesville, and that's where people are starting to disagree. You can disagree with the president's response, yeah, and not say, "Oh, he's responsible." His rhetoric during the campaign is responsible. Yeah, for and what then took they go, place. and then the the final step is, "Well, he needs to be impeached." Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's not let's not get ahead of ourselves. Right. We can we can call it when we see it, and when the president does something wrong, it's it's completely fair exactly. to be skeptical and make pointed observations. Well, President Trump was quick to react to today's terror attack in Barcelona, tweeting. The United States condemns the terror attack in Barcelona, Spain, and will do whatever is necessary to help be tough and strong. We love you. That is very sweet. Uh, but the political fallout continues with some of his closest allies on the Republican side unable to defend what he said. Now, earlier today, Tennessee Senator Bob Corker, who was a strong supporter of the president, he was also considered to be a favorite to become Secretary of State before Rex Tillerson was appointed, questioned the president's capacity to lead the country. The president has not yet um, has not yet been able to demonstrate the stability, uh, more some of the confidence that he needs to demonstrate in order to be successful. And, uh, and we need for him to be successful. Our nation needs for him to be successful. It doesn't matter whether you're Republican or Democrat. We need for our president. The world needs our president to be successful. Now, that is not Jeff Flake. That is not Marco Rubio. That is not someone who ran against the president for the job in 2016. That is Bob Corker. Well, like I said, one of his supporters and now uh, one of the latest on a growing list of Republicans who's become critical of the president. Will his increasing isolation from his party continue and will the rift allow him to accomplish anything on his agenda? Now, earlier today, Kat, before the Barcelona attacks, we saw the president going after Jeff Flake and Lindsey Graham on Twitter. Uh, he went after Senator McCain in his Tuesday press conference. He's got a narrow, thin margin in the Senate. And, and now it seems he's lost the support of Bob Corker. When does it take a measurable toll? And when does letting Trump be Trump uh, become a, a failing plan? Well, what I don't understand is no matter what President Trump said, his most loyal of, of his base wouldn't care and they'd support him anyway. And what he said, the way he handled Charlottesville was objectively a mess. And the, I've been obviously, I'm sure ever, lots of people who have you know, said that have been attacked for it. Yeah. But I mean, it wasn't very sensitive. He waited a long time to call it out, which mm -hmm. is much different than the way he handles Islamic terror. And he said that there was good people at a white nationalist oh. rally, okay? Yeah. It was objectively wrong. And I'm very, 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 my heart is warm to see some people who have been on Team Trump all the way, Team Trump all the way to say, yeah. hey, you know what? That's not cool. That really warms my heart. It's called um, integrity. All right. So when when does the Republican Party reach some sort of critical mass? Because here is an ally of the president. He's a chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee. What does that statement from Bob Corker say to you? I, I was very surprised, but um, I think that the really in, in, the, the real truth here is that they are supposed to be aligned yeah. around the, the agenda that they're supposed to work on. And people like Bob Corker 
I would imagine, are going to be supportive of whatever plans the president brings forward on yeah. tax reform and so on. And so they, or, or I think to a certain extent they're, they're saying what they feel they need to say this week. But the, the quicker they get back to talking about the real reasons that President Trump was elected mm -hmm. and what people want him to deliver, there's going to be much more unity around that. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but... But they, then they can actually focus on something practical. Yeah. And I think that's what they need to do. They got to get something done, though. You know, when it comes to health care, tax reform, and all these issues, mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like they can get a consensus even before this even took place. Yeah. Now, with the political pressure, these are a lot of establishment politicians that are going to cave now yep. and not support the president's agenda now because now, no, they now they're supporting each other. And now right. you have Mitch exactly. McConnell coming exactly. out acting like Captain America Shield exactly. for Jeff Flake. But do you and, think they're not going to, you don't think that they're going to sabotage. Um, the Trump agenda, into, even if it's things they agree with. I, I don't think they're going to sabotage them, but I think the president's misstep provided them with the political cover now to say, now we're de defecting from, from a, some of the agenda that the All right, when, and those defections are critical. We'll see if the right. president can get his party back in vote. line, get himself yep. back on track, and get the agenda moving in the right direction to get the economy growing and people working. That's the most important thing. All right. Thank you guys so much for being here. No Lawrence, Steve, and Kat. Thank you. Thank glorious you. party panel on a, a live Thursday show. Coming up more on today's Barcelona attack. Were there warning signs? Should Americans traveling to Europe be concerned about additional attacks this summer? Well, I don't know, but I know who has the answers. Mike Baker, and he joins me next. Stay here.